Hello, my name is Damon Vaughn, and I'm going to talk a little bit about today about some research I did for the Colorado Wood Utilization and Marketing Program of the State Forest Service. In brief, what we did is a survey of forest harvesting contractors that work in Colorado in order to profile the industry and find out some of the barriers that they're facing. So the problem, as many of you are probably aware of, is that we have millions of acres in Colorado at risk of catastrophic wildfire, and these lands need to be treated in order to mitigate against the threat that potential future fires could pose. And that's where the contractors come into play. We need capable businesses that can get this work done on the ground. So meanwhile, we have a forest products industry and a forest harvesting industry that's been in decline for several decades. Uh, we've seen fewer timber sales from the U.S. Forest Service. We have uh, fewer mills in operation now, which of course means longer trucking distances for these businesses. And we have poor markets for local wood. Uh, we import the vast majority of the wood that we use in the state. And this graphic on the right just shows in the red line the declining uh, timber harvest in millions of board feet. And the blue bars show the number of mills over the last several decades. Uh, and the number of mills has gone down from about 80 in the 1980s to around 30 in the present day. So with that in mind, we set out to conduct this survey in 2014 to get at the central question of whether or not the industry is robust enough to weather these issues and address the forest health threats that we face. So first of all, we made a question list. We wanted to ask the same questions to all contractors to get better answers. We developed a contact list. We got contact information for as many contractors throughout the state as we could get a hold of. And then we started making phone calls since it was a telephone survey. We called each contractor three times or until we got a hold of them. And we ended up with a response rate of about 33%, which is pretty consistent with other logger surveys in the literature. And we also got a hold of uh, about two dozen more that had gone out of business, which still gave us very good information. And then to analyze the data, we coded the responses uh, following methods in the literature in order to reduce some of the subjectivity of them. So just some quick select results. There's many, many more charts and graphs, and there's a publication that I'll link to at the end of this presentation. But just to highlight a few of them, there's the desired job type of the contractors in terms of size and land ownership. And the vast majority were looking for jobs on small private lands. Uh, that just reflects the size of a lot of these businesses. But the interesting find is the amount of them that are looking for actual large federal jobs of over 100 acres. There's still about 40% of the contractors had the capacity and the willingness to do that. So getting to their opinions on cost share grants, there's been a lot, of, a lot of additional grant funding available lately through programs like the Wildfire Risk Reduction Grant Program and the Forest Health Grant Program. And as you can see, the overwhelming majority of the contractors were in favor of these programs, saying that they help them stay in business and help get work done. Some, were, some opposed the grant, saying they just complicated the process, but the vast majority were in favor. So I'll talk a little bit about the major issues that are facing the contractors that came out during these interviews. Difficulty finding timber sales from the U.S. Forest Service was something a lot of them talked about. Many of them had shifted their, biz their uh, focus lately towards more fire mitigation work, often selling off logging equipment and buying things like masticators and hydro axes. Also, a lot of them commented that landowners can't afford to get this work done. It can cost several thousand dollars an acre. And a lot of times, once these grants are dispersed and they get to the individual community members, they only cover a few hundred dollars. So there's a pretty wide gap that some of the landowners need to make up. And that ties in a little bit with a third point here. There's a lot of so-called illegitimate contractors that can cut corners and offer cheaper work, but they might not be doing the kind of quality work that we want to see get done. And often landowners feel forced to go with a contractor like this that can offer it at a cheaper rate than a more socially responsible contractor that does better work. So some of the implications for management that came out of this, one would be better timing and coordination of treatments. So rather than offering up many, many small lots at a time, maybe offer up larger acreages, have landowners group together. This is something that, something that could be addressed at the community wildfire protection plan level. They could identify treatment areas that can, you know, maybe offer several hundred acres. And there are plenty of contractors in the state that have the capacity to take on jobs like that. Uh, increased local wood utilization would be a way to make this kind of work more affordable for the landowners. Um, if there were a higher value product that could be recovered, it could help offset the costs. And one potential avenue for this would be bioenergy, uh, such as the Banner Project is looking into, that would be the Bioenergy Alliance Network of the Rockies. Um, more bioenergy facilities could create more of a market for this kind of wood. 
And finally, additional grants, uh, continuation of these programs. Um, they've been a tremendous help to the contractors, and they've gotten a lot of work done. So more of them would, would uh, help address the issue. So that was just a brief introduction to this project. Um, we have a publication in the Forest Products Journal that has more information about methods and results if, if anybody is interested. I'd like to thank my advisor, Kurt Mackis, as well as many other parties. My contact information is there. Feel free to email me with any questions, and thank you for watching.